good afternoon. I'm sitting here together with Paolo Malo, uh, known to most people and uh, maybe very most known for the in innovation of All on Four. However, there are a few other things you have innovated too. But let me start now to get try to get a personal background here, Paolo. Uh, I understand I, I associate you with Portugal. So I assume you grew up in some of the suburbs outside Lisbon. Is that correct? No, I was born in Angola, in Africa, and my father was a farmer and um, a professional hunter. So I was brought up in this environment of farming, professional hunting, uh, until uh, 1975, when there was a civil war in Angola and we fled. We had to move out, so I went to South Africa, to Cape Town, and then I, I finished my school in Cape Town. I did my first years of university at UCT, University of Cape Town. And then in 1982, I went to Portugal to finish my medical studies. And then later I went to dentistry and then got my PhD. So now you've come to Portugal. You came, of course, to, to study dentistry immediately. Uh, that, was your, that was your aim, wasn't actually, it? Actually, I came to study medicine because I, I, was, I was a medical student. And my aim was neurosurgery. And so there was, dentistry was not at all on my, on my objectives. But I, uh, my, my uncle is quite a famous sportsman and dentist in Portugal. I stayed at his house. And uh, every, every morning, he would tell me, why do you want to be a neurosurgeon? Every night, why do you want to be a neurosurgeon? So eventually, one day, um, in my last year of medical school, I decided to change to dental. When would you say that you, 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 you sort of uh, uh, came on with the idea about, uh, about All on Four? Yeah. Well, uh, the, the idea of All on Four actually came on the sequence of immediate load single teeth. So in 1990, straight out of school, one year after school, um, I, I had some cases that I felt that I could do immediate load on single teeth and small bridges. And I was quite surprised. I mean, surprise, of course, in those days, that uh, I had really good results. Uh, in fact, I had 100% success rate. So what happened was that I contacted Noble BioCare. In those days, it was Noble Pharma. Yes, it was, yes. And uh, Bo Rangat was, uh, um, was an engineer working with uh, Noble BioCare. Indeed. And he got in touch with me. I explained what I was doing. And then I flew up to Gothenburg, and I explained what I had done. And he said, well, Paolo, this is fantastic because, you know, um, nobody has, has done this before. There is some, some, some people doing some implants and loading and not loading, but not as a single, as a single one or a small bridge. So I said, okay, fine. Uh, so what shall we do? And he said, we should publish. And, uh, and we tried to publish, but we never actually uh, could publish because no editor would accept for publication. They said that that was something that was crazy. It was few cases did not make any sense to publish. There was just luck that the implant survived, so they would not um, publish. But if you're now looking at the, the I'm coming back to all and four again, and I understand that uh, you started off in the mandible with very tilted implant uh, on the sides, and then were, were there straight implants in the middle? The first case I did actually was, the first case I did on the mandible, or maybe the first cases, maybe three or four, uh, it was actually five implants parallel. That I started like that, uh, following the Brana mark. Yes. The only difference is that I immediately load them. Right. That was the only difference. So I immediately load them, and uh, but it was parallel implants. And then I I thought that maybe maybe it would make sense if I incline the implants, the posterior ones. By inclining the implant, I would reach further Indeed. posterior in the bridge so that I would, even working between the, to, the two uh, mental nerves, I would probably reach the molar. Or so if you, if you place the implant, do you allow me to, to show here like this then, <laughs> yes, right? Exactly. Above the mental foramina, exactly. and then you come much further back further here. Back. That, that's, that's precisely so, it. Yes. So basically, I would reduce the cantilever right. to one tooth or even no tooth. I see. Because you didn't need it any longer because you had the support exactly. further back in exactly. the mandible. But by inclining the posterior implants, 
I could not have three implants in the middle. Right. Five could not fit there. Because by inclining, exactly. basically I had to remove one implant exactly. to have only two. Of course. Of so course. that 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 end up with two implants parallel and two implants uh, inclined about 45 degrees posterior. In 1996, um, I started, I did the first all-on-4 in the maxilla, in the maxilla. And I was very afraid. And that was a case with little bone, I suppose? There, there was a small case, bone volume? Exactly. That was a case that we did not have bone posterior to the first premolar. I see. And I inclined the implant in the same way. That case was done together with Bo Rangert. He was I at see. my side. <clears throat> and, uh, and we did this case. And uh, we came, the implant came out in the second premolar and we immediate load. So that was the first all-on-4 maxilla in 1996. So the role of Bell Rangert, because he, he, to my recollection, was not a clinician, was a, did he calculate the forces that were put on e your implants? Exactly. In that? That's exactly. what he did. Exactly. I see. He, had, he was uh, um, a key person in my life. Right. Uh, Bell Rangert was a key person in my life. Not only we were really good friends, but we worked very well together. Um, and basically he did two things to me. He helped me calculating the forces on the, the biomechanic forces, right, right. and that we could see that it would work. Mm -hmm. But besides that, he gave me the, the let's say, um, by his presence and by incentivating, he gave me the confidence to move forward for the maxilla, because I was not so sure that the maxilla would work. And with all that, and working together with the Nobel employee, Nobel Biocare probably it has been renamed to now, they were enthusiastic, were they? So, so what happened was that I, I constantly, every year, was bringing to Nobel Biocare attention. And in fact, uh, I tried other companies as well, competitors, and all of them rejected the idea of having implants inclined, only four implants, immediate load. All of them rejected the idea. And, uh, and then when, uh, when Ilian Kanepa came to Novo Biocare, then Bo Rangert said, let's try again uh, coming up with this, that maybe the new CEO or president will accept uh, this. So I was brought to, to Ilian Kanepa's office. I went through everything. Bo Rangert was there as well. And then Ilian asked Bo, um, what do you think about this? What do you think about this method? Do you think this is good? And Bo, of course, said, yeah, I've been following this for years. This is incredible because this, uh, we can avoid a lot of bone grafts. We can do immediate load, and this is a very safe method. So then Ilian said, uh, so why don't we you know, start promoting this and uh, move forward with this? So, so Nobel Biocare was the very first company that really showed interest, although it took a few years. Yes, it took about six or seven years. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. No, and, then, and, and then she, she, uh, she said, why don't, we, why don't we promote this? Why don't we move forward? Bo Ranger said that uh, it was tradition of normal care inviting other, other uh, dentists, uh, experts, uh, to see any new product. And everybody, has, everybody had, the, had uh, said that this was not a good idea. So, um, so, <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was, so still, so, so now the company had decided it was good, but the, the colleagues didn't like it. Is that exactly. what you're saying? Basically, was that that? I see. The same thing happened when, when we did the immediate load single teeth. The colleagues said it did not work, and the company said yes. And with all on four, the colleagues also said it does not work, and the company said yes, and then we move forward. But here we have now a certain, suddenly, um, very, um, obliquely put in tilted implants, right, uh, in the yeah. mandible and then later in the maxilla. In the maxilla. Uh, what about the prostodontics? Could they, could they handle those in the beginning? Well, you see, in those days, uh, already exist the 17-degree abutment and the 30-degree abutment already existed with the Brunamark. I see. Uh, the 30-degree abutment was not invented by me. It was Brunamark's so, so invention. You could, you, could use, you could use an ordinary Brunamark or exactly. a Nobel abutment. Exactly. I see. So I used the, those abutments right. in order to compensate the angulation. Otherwise, the bridge would not fit. So by inclining 45 degrees and using the abutment of 30 degrees, I only had 15 degrees. And that, that is okay because the multi-unit abutments allow 
that discrepancy. Exactly, to, to, exactly. So, so I could angle up to 45 degrees without the necessity of a new abutment by using the 30 degree abutment. And so therefore, the all on four was actually born. And when did you first say all on four? When we came up with this idea and Noble Bioke, Noble Farm, Noble Bioke, it was already Noble Bioke in those days. Noble Bioke said, okay, we will, um, we will uh, buy this, this system and we will market it. Uh, but she said, we need to find, she, Ilian Kanepa said, we need to find a name for this system. Yeah, I see. So, so that's when you, that's when you found the... Yes. So what I did, I, that day, I went dinner at the at uh, the port in Gothenburg. Indeed, yes. In the port of Gothenburg, we went to a fish restaurant. Right. With Bo Rangert. And we were at this restaurant and, and there was a piece of paper on, on the, on the yes, table. Yes, yes, yes. And then I said to Bo, we need to find a name that means something. I do not want a crazy name or something like that. So I wrote down, what does this actually do? So it, so I wrote down, all the teeth on only four implants, oh. right? So I wrote this long, long phrase, and obviously you cannot name something like that. No, that no, no, long. Of course. So said, then, I, then we said, uh, then both said, yeah, but that's too long. You need to cut. Of course, you need to cut. So let's start cutting. So I start cutting words, and it, from all the teeth on only four implants, it came up or all on four. In your work, with your innovations, the ordeals you had too, although it was much later and implants were now accepted, it was like this, you see, changing the, changing the recommendations of those days was not that easy. And uh, did you ever meet with Perima Brennemark? Yes, I did. Uh, when, uh, when at the time, at the time of immediate load, single teeth and small bridges, uh, we at Bo Rangat, I could not publish, Bo Rangat could not publish either. And Bo Rangat uh, fixed me a meeting uh, with uh, Professor Brana Mark. And I went to his office and, uh, and we sat down and, uh, and uh, Professor Brana Mark said, oh, hello, you are the young man. <laughs> and uh, I don't remember what age I was, but I was younger under, than he was. 30, but yeah, 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 younger yeah, yeah, than yeah. him. <laughs> so he said, he said to me, so you are the young man. So I, I kind of, um, you know, you, you remember this uh, much better than me. Uh, he, 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 was a, he was a figure that, um, that kind of put you on your knees, kind of, you know, he, he was very, very strong uh, approach. And I was a kid, you know, so when he said, you, so you are the young man, I thought, he's going to clap me now, you know, because I'm doing something stupid. You know? <laughs> so, so I said, yes, I think I am. <laughs> so he said, um, so you, you are doing this thing of, um, of immediate loading the implant, right? I said, yes, I am. And, said, and he said to me, but you know that that's not correct. You should wait. You should wait for the implant to to be successfully um, os integrated and this and that. I said, yes, I know. But, and then Bo Rengen said, yes, but this is what we have. This is the, the cases. And, this, uh, and, he said, and he said, although I do not agree with this, I think you should publish. That's what he said. And then he, uh, because of him, he managed, we managed to publish the first, uh, the first let's say, article on the, on, uh, in 1998, at the, at the Noble Barker magazine, which was called Talk of the Times. Right. And the editor was Lisbeth Dvasler. Right. And the, Professor Brandmark called her and said, I want this article on this magazine. <laughs> and, she, uh, and she placed it. And it was the first time that an article on immediate load, single teeth and small bridge came public. Indeed. It was well, not in a scientific magazine, it was in the Nobel right. Care. Right, so, so, so the news may not have spread to scientists uh, in the same manner as it would if you had published in a exactly. proper journal. Since then, I assume you have published a number of papers yes. in proper journals, in it, peer-reviewed journals, but that was impossible at the time. It I was impossible at the time, yeah. they would not accept. Yeah. But immediately, in 2000, I published on a scientific journal with three years of follow-up right. from 1997. And that was, and that was in, a, that was in, 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 in one of our major journals. Then. Yes, it was. So then it came out for the first then time it came in out. publication. But, but, but at the same time, um, uh, Professor Erickson also published 
with a two-year follow-up. That's right. That's right. So, so you know, here his uh, paper became more visible than mine, and I understand that because he's a he's a big figure. I was just a kid dentist, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the truth, you know. But the fact is that he published in two thousand with two years follow-up. I published in nineteen ninety-eight. And I published in 2000 with three years follow-up. But somehow, um, many dentists around the world think that he was the first to publish on immediate load single teeth. And, and also, uh, Schulman, Snitman, they, they were very early they too, were very so early, in, but in it America. Was but, but, but I mean, that is the situation. I think that we were all, I mean, Brennamock had had a great ordeal, of course, when he came with his implants back in 1965. No dentist believed in it, right? Yes. And, and uh, therefore, I think he took a very, once he had had the breakthrough in Toronto, for instance, when the, the international market had opened up for, for, for Nobel and, and their implants, mm -hmm. uh, th then Brennamark took a very conservative attitude. Yeah. Uh, understandably, but uh, many people followed suit and there were for quite, a quite some time no real challenges to the concept. But then people started like you did. They also started in North America, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. by doing things differently, right? Yeah. After some time, yeah. people had some courage. You had a great lot of courage. And then you even dared to go to Brennamock with it, I must yes. say. And, and, uh, and I, was, I was called a cowboy. Oh, I see. The cowboy dentist, because I dared to do immediate load single teeth. I dared to do this thing called the all-on-4. And I dared to do this implant uh, which was basically an implant that was forcing the bone. So uh, he literally called you a cowboy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. they, were, they were calling me a cowboy. They were calling things like all on four, all on the floor. M maybe in Angola sometimes you had cows. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've been thinking no, about... <laughs> the first time they called me a cowboy actually was in the United States. I, I see, I see. Yes, I, uh, I finished a lecture, a, a lecture in a small group of people. Uh, chosen by uh, Nobel BioCare, maybe 40, 50 people. And one of the dentists in the room said that I was a cowboy. Because, uh -huh, you know, okay. I was a cowboy because all these things of immediate load and uh, putting pressure on the bone, you know, these things could not, could not work. We have people today all over the world, all over the world, that still think that all on four is something stupid, that they prefer to graft, and then wait, uh, you know, six months, and then wait another year, and so forth. But um, but they don't understand. They don't understand that you should not graft a ninety-year-old person. But they also not doing these cases. I, 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 I think that even if you say there are always one or two persons who, who would never agree about anything, yeah. uh, with time you have. Uh, uh, I think, uh, showed to people that this works and is a very interesting, yes. uh, I don't want to call it a novelty because it is 25 years old exactly. at the least, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but still, in people's mind, uh, it, they may not know about the first few years, but that you, when, when you yeah. used it. It is, it is obvious today that all on four is used all over the world. I mean, there's, there's, right. uh, there's no way that you can deny that, that this is, exactly. this is a tool in exactly. our toolbox. And, 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 and now we are coming a little bit towards the end. So I have to ask you then, you know this because I assume that you are traveling a bit. Is that correct? Unfortunately, I travel a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and you find that all of four is used <laughs> in Australia? Yes, I actually just arrived from Australia. Yeah. In China? In China, I work a lot, yes. But not now because China now because of the pandemic is closed. Even in Angola? In Angola, I also work, yes, yes. Okay. Angola, because it's my home country, and uh, I do have a clinic and a house there. So I do go there. Uh, I do not go to Angola to actually to work. I go to Angola because I need my, my peace. I need, I need to see nature, African pure nature, to relax, to rethink my life. But because I have a clinic there, I take advantage and I work a little bit to pay my air ticket. <laughs> Dr. Malo, I thank you very much indeed for, for, for having shared all these things, uh, <laughs> how things were in the beginning and how they came to be when, when, uh, when you had all the clinical results. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you very much, Thomas. Right, thank you. Thank you.